I'm Jim Scudder. Today on In Grace, we're in Nueva, Egypt. Welcome back to Exodus Found. What an awesome experience it has been to retrace the Exodus journey. Last time, my brother-in-law, Neil, and I arrived in Cairo and visited the pyramids and the Sphinx in Giza, being reminded of Egypt's rich history and amazing building abilities. But we wanted to investigate Israel's part in Egypt's history, so we went to the renowned Egyptian Museum to check out the Maranepha Steel, a great stone slab that provides evidence of Israel in Egyptian history. We also examined an ancient Egyptian chariot so that Neil and I would know what to look for in our upcoming Red Sea exploration dives that we're going to do today. Then we drove toward the eastern Nile River Delta where Goshen would have been. And at this starting point of the Exodus, much intriguing evidence has been found of Joseph and his family living and prospering there. We also visited the shallow lakes near the Suez Canal that some have proposed would have been the site of the Red Sea crossing. Neil and I decided that those were definitely not the correct location because the Bible speaks of a deep, large body of water. So we begin to drive toward the best candidate that we can think of, the Gulf of Aqaba. Today, we arrive at Nueva, a likely beachhead where Israel was trapped on all sides. We wanted to see and explore this interesting place for ourselves and take you underwater in search for evidence of Pharaoh's army. We've made it here to Nueva Neil in Egypt, this kind of peninsula of land, mm. a beachhead really. I've been imagining what it would look like just for months anticipating this trip. And it really, it's built up more than I expected because there's structures here and a hotel. But I'm just amazed. This is exactly where the children of Israel were when God told Moses, tell the children of Israel to fear not and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah, now we're not saying this is for sure the place, but it does make sense, right? It does seem to fit, you know, it's not really logical that it's these shallow lakes. Yeah that they crossed. It doesn't seem like the Gulf yeah. of Suez fits the criteria of them being trapped in in a great deep, right. what is that, around 100 feet or so deep in the Gulf of Suez? Yeah, maybe 100, maybe 200, Yeah, but much. this is, what, behind us is the Red Sea, which is like a half mile deep at the crossing point, yeah. but there are these deep trenches where it's a mile deep, mm. and that's only a you know a 10 mile wide body of water. Yeah, That's the great deep, and when the Bible speaks of the depths uh, great depths, you know, six or seven verses in the Old Testament that speak of this being a deep body of water. This fits, so I think it has to be the Gulf of Aqaba, mm. okay? But then where's the crossing point? It seems like it can't be up at the tip because, you know, you could just kind of go around. I don't think it's all the way at the other end mm -hmm. because it just seems a little too far and you don't have the, some of the features that you have here. Here at Nueva, what do you have? You've got this huge plateau plenty of room for the entire nation of Israel to be. They came through this gorge, that's the only way in and the only way out in antiquity, Yeah. because on both sides you have the mountains coming into the water. Mm. They're on this beach trap because you have the Egyptian army coming in, mm. the Wadi Wadir behind them, Yeah. and here they are. Now, you also have this plateau where it's not as deep as on both sides of the Gulf of Aqaba. I don't know, just everything about this place seems right. It's wonderful to get to be in one of the most beautiful places in the world to dive yeah. and to look for something so important as that piece of history. Yeah, so it should be a great day and it's a beautiful morning too. And now we're on the north side of Nueva. Uh, Red Sea off to our right. Uh, if you continue to go north, you'll eventually get up to a lot in Israel and Aqaba and Jordan. And so there they would have been off in the distance, a million, two million people mm. encamped and entrapped really. Yeah. 
Now, the Bible actually gives us some geographic names like Migdal, which means tower, Pihahirot, which means the mouth of the gorge, Belsophon, which means Lord of the North. Obviously, the sea, we know where that is. Pihahirot, we think, is the place where Wadi Watir opens. Watir means water, by the way, and there was a lot of water that would come out of there in the rainy season. So there are some things we still don't know. Uh, maybe there was a tower in antiquity, an Egyptian tower, and that would make sense because you want to guard maybe what it was here and put a tower up. It would be a great place for a tower right there at the mouth of the Wadi Watir, kind of the gorge on each side, maybe a tower on top, logical place. Doesn't it seem unusual though that there are so many references to a place, like God wanted us to do some research later on and to figure all this out to show the world what actually happened and what's here. Sure, he gave us four points of reference and it's really neat to be here just kind of in pursuit of the truth. All right, Neil, so off in the distance, you can see the gorge, Piha Hiroth, possibly, the opening of the mouth, the gorge. And you can see that the Wadi Watir, was what that's called, the water would flow whenever there's a heavy rain all the way to this spot that we're standing. You can kind of see this is the dry riverbed. So this is ground center if this was the spot of the exodus, which again, it, we think it is, it does make sense. They would have come out of that pass as the only way in and out of here back then, because there were no modern roads. They had to cut the mountains to make the modern roads. And then they would have been spit out basically onto this beach. Now, what their fear was was that Egypt would come after them. And sure enough, Pharaoh changed his mind. They mounted up on the chariots. They flew down what took you know, Israel, 10 days to get here, took them probably a few days. And they came, they followed them right into that gorge. But then God stopped Egypt, the pillar. Can you just imagine for a moment, wow. the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire that would have held them there mm. while God was saving Israel here. Wow. Hundreds of thousands of people here on this beachhead. They need to get over to Midian, across the Gulf of Aqaba, and God parts the Red Sea. It's an amazing thing if this was the spot that we're standing here so close to it. Yeah. I can imagine what they're thinking as they come out of there. It's it's narrow, it's it's confined. Some places I understand it's just, you know, maybe only 20 feet wide at times with granite walls up to 1500 feet high. God turned them yeah. on the route. Yeah. It was unexpected. I think Moses thought he would continue on the normal road to Midian, mm -hmm. which would have been to the north all the way to a lot and then down. Yeah. But here, they found themselves basically stuck on this beach. So let's walk over and show everyone the other side of this bridge. And you can see again, the wadi opening out into the Gulf of Aqaba. And this is about the center of this peninsula of beach here. Yeah. My feeling is this is probably where it happened. Right. And just like this kind of area feels like it's parted just for water to go. It kind of does. It's easy to picture that whole Red Sea parted right there for them to go all the way across. And I'm struck in the passages I reread Exodus chapter 14 that God said, I will get honor upon Pharaoh and upon his host. <laughs> and the detours that God allows in our life, sometimes we don't see that big picture, but God sees the big picture and he knows that him getting honor is the purpose for what he allows us to go through. How many chariots were part of this army? 600 and it says okay. possibly others. Sure, so 600 chariots. This would have been a mighty fighting force. Egypt was the premier nation at the time, the premier military force. And God said, I'm gonna show him who I am. When that cloud lifted, Egypt went right through before they got to the other side, and once everyone was in, the Bible says, God allowed the waters to come crashing down. And you're talking about, in the center there, a half mile deep, yeah, hundreds of feet of water slamming down upon the Egyptians. Now, I would love to start an expedition Ooh. and maybe get uh, submersibles and everything and go look in that deeper water yeah. where there aren't corals and sure. you don't have some of the silting. Sure. Less coral grows below 330 feet, but nothing grows below 600 feet. And so there could be plenty of evidence 
there. I can't wait to dive. I'm so grateful for the privilege of coming here with yeah, you. Yeah. Now, now, just so you just relax a little bit. We're not going <laughs> to find anything because yeah. where we're diving, others have dove. Sure. But I mean, you have more faith than I do. I'm just happy to be here. But sure. yeah, you want to pull up that that <laughs> sword or that chariot wheel, don't you? Well, I understand we can't touch it if I understand you correctly. You can't, but uh, we can document it. But document it, take video of whatever we find. Mm -hmm. Just the thought that that this is where it was and that it was for a bigger purpose for God getting glory is really inspiring. Now, what are some of the reasons we think that Nueva could be the crossing point? Well, first of all, it's almost halfway along the Gulf of Aqaba. And there's also something very interesting about the water depth mm -hmm. that I want to get to in a minute. But they also found a pillar on both sides of this crossing point. And the pillars actually were a memorial of it being a crossing point. They call it the Pillar of Solomon. Neil, this is a very unusual thing. It's granite. It's a column, a pillar. It was found in the surf here in Nueva. Hmm. And you can see here where it had been eroded. Actually, But this is a real artifact. Right. You don't find anything like this anywhere around here. And it's just one. Hmm. Now, Ron said that he found another one on the other side, on the Saudi Arabia side. And that one was turned over to the authorities and it disappeared. And he said that one had uh, ancient Hebrew writing on it. And the Hebrew on the other one it supposedly had Solomon on it. And some of the things about the Red Sea crossing. You know, this one, I don't see any writing other than the graffiti, obviously. But it could have been on this side as well, which is eroded away. Again, it doesn't give us any conclusive proof. But, I mean, what else would it be? Why would it be here? Very curious. Enough with the dry land. Now it's time to jump into the Red Sea and explore the depths. I've been diving since I was 16, and I have an advanced open water certificate. But Neil is new and has only recently received his open water certificate. And for this reason, we're going to go slow at first, and he will not be able to dive as deep as I will. So what are you feeling about to go on your first Red Sea dive? I am so excited. That's what the children of Israel saw. And they didn't have scuba gear to get over there or a boat or wood to build a boat. And so the thought of maybe finding something underwater, I'm real excited. It's awesome to get back underwater and to be able to share with all of our Ingrace friends the incredible world that God has created that we rarely get to see. Now, we're looking for artifacts, but I'm also going to be looking at corals and fish and the beauty of God's creation. And as we begin our dive, the first thing we see is seagrass and a really cool puffer fish. And as we continue to swim along with our dive master and Neil, we're looking around to see if we can find anything that resembles an artifact. And right away, we find this stick or this pole, not sure what it is, but it certainly doesn't look like it's been down there for thousands of years. Oh, and this is an amazing lionfish, one of the most unusual looking fish in the world. Oh, oh here's something. It looks like an ancient paint bucket from the Egyptian dynasty. There's also an ancient Egyptian chair. I don't know how some of these things get into the water. In all seriousness, the beauty down here is incredible. These, what they call Red Sea goldfish are everywhere. The actual name is the Jewel Fairy Baslet. Some of these coral formations seem like they could have been something previously, but it's so hard to tell. They look just kind of like any other coral formation. So we just weren't certain if this was anything more than just something you would normally find underwater in any body of salt water. Oh, we saw a lot, but I don't think we found exactly what we're looking for. So that was our first dive at Nueva. And I think the dive itself was spectacular, right? Yeah. Because right. the water is perfectly clear and the life is vibrant, mm. colorful, uh, really unique creatures too that we didn't see in Florida yeah. when we did our training. Right. The white eel, of about three feet long, was spectacular. Yeah. And there were a bunch of little bright orange fish right by some big clumps of coral. Fantastic. Yeah. It was a good introductory dive. Also, the potential of what might have happened here too is pretty cool. It, it's very cool. 
All right, so let's talk about the depth of the Red Sea. Now, you found this map, and it is the depth map of the Gulf of Aqaba, mm. and it's a bathymetric depth chart. The red is shallow, and the uh, yellow is deeper, green and blue, the blue is the deepest. Mm -hmm. So you have here a really deep, narrow body of water. So when you have a deep, narrow body of water, you're gonna have some really steep declines and inclines. You have two and a half million people, or 2.3 million, 2.4 million people, you have women and children. You would think that at the crossing point, there would have to be some slope that they could navigate. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been diving a lot in different parts of the world, and there are these walls that go. Uh, one wall I dove in Mexico in Cozumel was 100 feet at the top of the wall, and it was just straight drop off to 1,000 feet. Wow. And so there are places like that on the Gulf of Aqaba. Mm -hmm. But when you look at this map, and this is the Nueva Beach head that we've been talking about, mm -hmm. you notice here, Neil, you have the lines that are pretty far apart from each other. You don't have these big deep holes here. Sure. And we know uh, other people have proposed this as a crossing point, mm -hmm. but you have here some really sharp Very steep. edges, Very and steep, steep 40, edges. Around f up to 45 degrees roughly, which is really steep, especially if you're trying to roll a cart down it. Yeah. And some people said the crossing points up here, but of course that doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, it seems like they got down pretty far along the Red Sea. It is a natural slope mm -hmm. down and back up. Let's talk about the depth. The depth in the middle here at the Nueva Beach point and the crossing point, mm -hmm. where you said there, there weren't any cliffs right on the edges. They had ways to get in and then get back out naturally. Mm -hmm. But you have here the green. The green is about, what, 700, 800 meters? meters, yeah. So you're talking about 22, 2300 feet or so mm -hmm. at the deepest point. Uh, so you're going down from the edge 22, 2300 feet. Over five miles. And then back up. Okay, so what is that gradient? What's that ratio? So the steepest is about, I think, 14%. And 14% is a steep grade, steep. but it's not any steeper than an interstate going through the mountains. Is that sure. correct? Right. Or even a handicap ramp. Sure. Okay. That part of it's plausible. Let's talk about 22, 2300 feet deep, though. Mm. That's hard for us to comprehend. Wow. I'll be in Dubai. And in Dubai, they have the world's tallest building. This tower is about the same height as the depth of that crossing point. Wow. And when you stand there and you look at this mm -hmm. building, you feel like an ant, mm -hmm. and you think, could you imagine the walls of water being as tall? And it's not just a spire sticking out, it's this massive wall that On both could sides. destroy you so quickly. Now it's time for our second dive, and hopefully we'll find some evidence of Pharaoh's army. Welcome back underwater, everybody. We are going down into the salt water of the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba. Again, so much beauty. The corals are amazing. But we're not really looking for coral. We're not looking for sea creatures like this eel. We're looking for artifacts. We're looking for anything that could be from the time of Moses. Now, these are called Moses' soul. In other words, they said when Moses parted the Red Sea, they split these fish in half, and that's why both of the eyes are on the one side. It's kind of funny. But we continue to swim around looking for anything abnormal, out of place. Uh, and here it looked like there could be some creatures. Oh, here we go. This is a frogfish. Isn't that just the ugliest thing? But they blend right in. You would hardly even know that they're there once they stop moving. Just incredible. Now this was a neat fish. This is a thornback cowfish. This coral had a whole school of three-spot damsels. Really beautiful. We continue to swim. We're hoping to find something. We're hoping to make an amazing discovery, but yet that's not what we found, but it was still fun. All right, so dive number two. It got a little stirred up, I think. I don't know if that's the sun level. It wasn't quite as clear to me. Yeah, it felt like it wasn't quite as clear. So this is a big shipping lane too, the Gulf of Aqaba. Mm. Because remember, this is four countries. Egypt, yeah. Israel, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia. Sure. So there's an international shipping lane right in the middle. 
that those ships have to stay in. A lot of cargo, a lot of Dead Sea products come down here and are shipped out worldwide. Mm -hmm. How many of these ships are crossing without even realizing what might have happened here historically? Right. You know, one of the grandest, biggest miracles ever to take place mm. right here on the Red Sea. How human of us, really, right? Just to walk by the miracles God does all the time. Well, that's probably, I think, the biggest miracle that is when someone is uh, saved Amen. from their sin. It's a greater miracle than the party in the Red it Sea. It is. Yeah. But sometimes we just float right on by without even realizing how significant things are. Wow. And the children of Israel said to Moses, were there no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here? Why didn't you listen to us in Egypt and let us die there? It'd have been better to serve the Egyptians than to mm. come out here and die. How discouraging would that have been? Mm. You've just been through all the plagues. They didn't have any of the plagues. Yeah. Now they're, they're released from Egypt. You know, as a leader, sometimes it's discouraging. You want to do the right thing. Uh, you want to follow the Lord. You want yeah. people to follow you as you follow the Lord. Yeah. But then they say things, yeah. you know? So Moses says this to the Lord and the Lord says to him, why are you crying out to me? Tell them to be still and see my salvation. And then it says in the very end of chapter 14, after they were already across, it says, then they feared the Lord and his servant Moses and believed him. <laughs> so it took sight for them to actually click and realize, oh, actually God did this and he preserved us. And yeah. And when we think of the party of the Red Sea, sometimes we think of the sight of it and it must have been a magnificent sight. But think of all of the other senses that would have been opened up, like the sound. Oh. You have a rushing wind. You have certainly maybe a sound of the wind holding up the walls of water. Now, this wasn't a natural wind. This was a supernatural event. There's no natural explanation of sure. this. So maybe a certain wind came down at a certain place. It was directed and it split and it held it up. So you would have that sound. You'd probably have that smell of the ocean. Right. Sea creatures sure. and salt. Oh and, yeah. You know, Which so you're- smell right now. Yeah. What if you're also feeling the force of that water being held up. Sure. And then wouldn't your heart be beating a oh, thousand beats a minute? Because it's a half mile high on each right. side of you and you've already felt the rumble of 600 advancing chariots and you're scared. And then God in his mercy allows the cloud to, it says it moved from in front of them to behind them. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying earlier about the sand and it was darkness to the Egyptians, but it was light to the children of mm -hmm. Israel. So the cloud actually, was a fire and darkness somehow mm. at the same time. And so the thing that God uses to protect you helps you. Like it, it hurts your enemy, but it helps you. Yeah. Amazing how- God can do that. Yeah. And sometimes we start to feel like, does God care? Yeah. Is he really here for me? Is he really? But listen, if you just humble yourselves and trust almighty God, yes. the God that made the uh. H2O, the, the God that made the earth, the God that made us. Right. If we are humble before him, if we walk, first of all, accepting his gift of salvation sure. through his son Jesus, but then also every day it's a faith walk. When we are calm and we trust and we walk yes. by faith, people are going to notice just us trusting God is going to give yes. him glory and be a testimony to other people. Yes. Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The next day, we decided we wanted to go out in a boat and jump into the water that's more in the center of Nueva, the most probable place of the center of the crossing point. This is really fun, isn't it? This is fantastic. Yeah, it's a treat to be out on the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aqaba. Yeah. In a fairly small fishing boat. Yeah. I'm looking right over your shoulder at Wadi Watir, where the children of Israel came out onto Nueva Beach. Yeah, and so from this perspective, you could really see the beachhead. Yeah. You know, and it's really big. It juts way out from land all the way around, forming this big, like, launching pad, I guess, for God's great miracle. And then Israel gets through, and Egypt decides to follow them. Yeah. The last person gets out, God allows Egypt to enter. They all get in. This is a 10 mile stretch. They're all now in in their chariots and even probably Pharaoh himself, I think, they're all inside and then their wheels start popping off. 
Yeah. And their, their chariots are dragging, and all of a sudden, the walls of water just come crashing down on them to destroy the most powerful army on the earth, showing the power of the one true God. The power of the one true God. And God says, so that he would get honor and the Egyptians would know that he is the Lord. And literally, the passage says he took their wheels off, their chariots. I don't know how, you know, we saw the one in the museum and it had the pins on the end. I don't know, did God just reach down and just pull the pins or what did he do? You know, I'm just thinking about that. But then it says they fled from the face of the Israelites because they recognized that God fought for them. I'm very impressive. If this was the spot, which it seems like it is, there's a, a certain reverence, I think, that we should be experiencing right now. After viewing all of this from a boat, I really wanted to get in, get wet, and look around here, more in the center of Nueva. And as we swam around, I continued to look for anything that looked abnormal. Unfortunately, we just found coral and fish. And then when we got out of the water, our boat captain was fishing for squid. And then he gave my sister a try. I want to try more of this. Oh, Julie! Oh, so oh, 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 oh my goodness. We have another question to consider, Neil. Pharaoh. Mm. Did he go in yeah. to the Red Sea? And the Bible actually does give us some verses that implies that he did. Mm -hmm. And of course, the movies all say he did. Sure. Some friends of ours that are archeologists and academics, they feel like the Pharaoh they believe is the Pharaoh of the Exodus continued a, a reign for a while after that, and he did not die, that he did not go in. So what does the Bible actually say? Sure, I have the passage open. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then Miriam in Exodus chapter 15 talks about Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. Verse 19, for the horse of Pharaoh. So I don't know if his horse left without him and left him <laughs> in Cairo or if he was on it. So the question is, First of all, was he on this campaign? And I think the Bible's clear that he was, that he was part of chasing after his slaves that he had released, and now he changed his mind. They're asking themselves in Exodus 14, 5, why have we done this? Why did we let our, our servants go? And verse six says, and he made ready his chariot mm -hmm. and took his people with him. Basically, he's the general, he's leading his army, and he, he would do that often on campaigns. And there he is on the beach. So. Did he go in to the, the Red Sea? Was he killed in this episode? Some think no, some think yes. What say ye, Neil? Wow, so I know in verse 28 of Exodus 14, it says there remained not so much as one of them. The question is, did he go in the water? Does, that mean, does that mean all of them? Could he have been at the very end? And you know, I always thought he, he went in and he and was died. killed. I did too. So again, we don't know. So on our next dive, we're probably not gonna find Pharaoh himself because either he didn't go in or his body was retrieved. But we are hoping to find something tangible. And this time, I'm hoping to dive a little deeper to cover new ground. The dive center is not really wanting to take us into the area that we wanted to go. There's a lot of permissions and stuff that they need to get here. We're negotiating so I can go a little deeper. I feel like the farther out you go, the better chance you would have of finding something that somebody else hasn't already found. So hopefully they'll be able to take me deeper because I have the advanced open water and still the others in our party uh, can still go diving. I got approval to go with my own guide and dive down over 100 feet. Neil will have to stay in shallower water with another group. Also this time, I'm bringing a metal detector hoping to stumble on a sword, a spearhead, or a chariot wheel. And welcome back underwater, everybody. This time I'm gonna be going a little bit deeper in hopes that the deeper we go, the more chance that we'll find something that is unique. Now, the first thing we find is this beautiful little shrimp. 
And I keep scanning with my metal detector. We find things like this rope and probably a buoy of some sort. Again, not what we're looking for, but definitely something that's unusual and interesting. This coral is really beautiful. It's called bubble coral. We found this artifact and it looked interesting. It looked like maybe a hub, but I kept thinking it's probably a flange of a pipe. So you see things, if they have coral on it, you can't touch it, you can't bring it up. And I think we ended up dive three without anything definitive. Okay, so that was dive number three. That was great. Uh, I was with a different guide. You stayed shallower. I went down to about 102 or three feet. And uh, how was your dive? It was great. And I saw a couple things that looked possibly structural. I'm not going to claim it was anything. One did kind of resemble maybe a hub of a chariot, but I, I can't say for sure that's what and it you was. you have video of that? I do have okay. video. I still feel like the crossing point, if it was on Nueva, would be further north from here. We okay. can't dive there but uh, still pretty cool. Saw yeah. amazing creatures. Yeah. And to me, it's worth coming just to see the creation under the water. So either way, it's a win-win, I think. For sure. Good job. Good job. This is it, Neil, our last dive. So what are you feeling? I'm just grateful to be on this trip and just be able to look for whatever's here. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of like one of those things you've worked hard to get here. Mm -hmm. uh, you got your scuba certification and it's all coming down to this one last dive. But I have a feeling that you're probably gonna keep diving in your life. It's so much fun and 70% of the world's covered in water. So I'd like to. You find these little pieces of paradise, mm -hmm. these uh, little, Coral heads. Even if you just stop and stare at one of those corals for a half hour, yeah, it would be enjoyable. It would be. And it, literally, all of creation just shouts about God's goodness. And of course, creation is marred by the fall. But when you come to places like this, it feels like more of that beauty just comes through in a new way. And yeah. especially with the sunshine so bright today. It's like you're in a fish tank. And so, literally, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what we can find. I'll uh, use the metal detector one last time and we'll give it one last shot. This dive is gonna be so incredible because we start by diving under this pier and it was full of cowfish, lionfish, and just beautiful corals and beautiful creatures all encrusted on these poles. Now this round coral was intriguing, but I saw it all over the place. I think it's just a round coral. Then we swam through the beautiful school of minnows. Although the marine life is incredible, we're not looking for marine life. We're looking for anything that could be left from the Egyptian army. Another paint bucket. Not really getting any hits with anything that I felt could be something of ancient Egyptian origin. More fish under and around and in, all throughout the coral. So much life, so much variety, colors, oranges, purples, greens. As we wrap up dive four, we kept seeing these beautiful orange little fish, these Red Sea goldfish, and then this frogfish. Just, again, it looks almost like a blob down there, but then it starts to swim, and sure enough, it's a fish. Time to go up, though. As in diving, you have to be super careful or you'll get the bends, which is deadly in some cases. Last dive, Neil, what'd you think? Just beautiful, seeing all the things under the pier that were so uh, gorgeous, a lot of lionfish, and then a lot of little orange ones. It really is like you're swimming in an aquarium. Well, it is, and a lot of these fish, they have the look of almost coral and stuff, so they blend in yeah. so amazingly, like that, those frogfish that we saw. Yeah. I saw some clownfish. I'm not sure what do they live in, the... Anemone? Yeah. 
and they were darting in and out of it. Were they doing like mimes and stuff? What were they doing? Were they funny? It felt. <laughs> One of them kept coming out towards me. And oh, think, they're protecting their anatomy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really need to see them. You haven't seen those before. I, I've never seen them here. Only on Finding Only Nemo. Only on Finding Nemo. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I saw a lot of those when I first started diving. I mean, really, this is very similar to what I first saw. And that just made me fall in love with, wow. with diving just because it's so amazing, so incredible. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying variety and color yeah. are the, the big attributes of creation, but especially of water. Sure. What do you think when you're down there that, about God and his character? What do you think? I don't know. I just think that he is a God of artistic ability, genius. Man is trying to copy God's creation. When an architect builds a building, they're always looking at nature yeah. for inspiration. Or an engineer building a plane or a car, they're looking at what God has done and what God has created. That's why I love being a creationist. Yeah. Because we recognize it as something that God did. Sure. Now, I think this is a point of land in the world, if this is the crossing spot of the Red Sea crossing, the parting of the water, where you just have to praise God. You mm -hmm. just have to say, Lord, you're amazing. Your, your power is unbelievable. Yeah. And you did put down Pharaoh. Yeah. And we all should be humbled. Mm -hmm. We all should be falling on our face before God. So that's kind of what I feel after I dive, especially here in Nuevo. Yeah. Although we didn't make any major discoveries today, we still believe that we're in the right spot. Perhaps in the future, there might be an in-grace, high-tech, deep marine exploration that will find some real evidence of Pharaoh's army. Next, I'm going over to Saudi Arabia to see for myself the evidence of the Midianites, a split rock, and Mount Sinai. I don't think you're ever gonna find anything more beautiful than this, the Red Sea at dawn. Here in Nueva, this has been a spectacular experience. To be with my brother-in-law, Neil, my sister, his wife, Julie, my wife, Karen. Today actually is our anniversary. To be able to be at this beautiful place and to be able to discover things for our friends at Ingrace has been an awesome experience. Next time, we're going across to Saudi Arabia to look for the real Mount Sinai on our series, Exodus Found. But as we end today's episode, let me just ask you a question. Have you experienced the miracle of salvation? Here in these waters, God saved Israel from sure destruction as the Pharaoh was pursuing them and they were about to be destroyed. But God can save a nation by parting a deep ocean. If he can do that, he can do something more spectacular and more amazing. He can save you. Yeah, you need salvation, so do I. We are being pursued by the serpent, by the devil. But Jesus came to do a death blow to the devil. When he died on the cross, the devil thought he won. But Jesus, the Son of God, died for our sins, and he dealt the devil a death blow. And he rose again the third day, and he offers you and me a gift called eternal life. And if you will just put your trust in him to Believe in Him, not your religion, not your works, but in Him. The Bible clearly says that you will be saved today, tomorrow, and forever. Let me show you this wonderful illustration. The Bible says that you and me are sinners. Let this be sin, my phone in my left hand representing all of us, and my right hand representing the Lord Jesus Christ. He was perfect, He had no sin. But you know what He did on the cross? He became sin for us. He took our sins on the cross and watch, he says, if you will trust in me, if you'll believe in me, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the gift that God is offering to you. I hope you discover that today. God bless you.
record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.